Welcome to the 19.9 Podcast with HVS. My co-host today is Josh Barnett, one of the owners of 19.9, a retro college apparel company. My name is Aaron Meyer. On today's episode, we've ended the most recent decade. It's time to make 2000 to 2010 retro and draft our favorite players from that era. But first, Billy Packard knows what time it is. Jim, isn't it amazing when Michigan can keep this game to a 19-foot, 9-inch game inside that three-point line? It's all there. Nice move by Steve Fisher here. Turn it into the 1990s. What's going on, Josh? What's up, sir? Not much, man. How was your holiday break? Uh, it was great, man. Went on vacation, um, which was nice. And uh, but it was a lot of work too, and uh, lost my father-in-law over over break, mm. which which really sucked and still stings. And uh, so that wasn't we weren't off to a great start there, but we we brought it back with vacation and and doing better now. Good. How about you? Yeah, yeah, we were gonna originally recap the staff versus students basketball game, and you had to miss it, so that was a bummer on on multiple levels. Obviously, yeah. the one huge one, and then our small corner <laughs> yeah so uh i got the call about my father-in-law passing i'd actually gone into um into school early and worked out that day and right at school was about to start with well we started 7 15 or 7 30 about seven o'clock is when i got the call and i i had to bail so i hated missing it but i heard that you guys nah. held it down Oh yeah, we we represented for you. You we were definitely uh, thinking of you and and wishing that it wouldn't have worked out that way. You could have been there because it would have been fun. However, I did probably avoid like an Achilles tear or an ACL tear by not being there. So in that sense, I was not that sad about it. Yeah, you don't want to ruin that vacation that you had planned. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, how about the from the 1909 side, uh, how was the Christmas holiday rush? I can imagine it was pretty crazy. Yeah, it's been nuts here, uh, but nuts in a good way. And, uh, you know, with uh, with the funeral and, and all that stuff going on and, and then the vacation and stuff going on, it's been, uh, you know, crazy trying to uh, trying to get caught up and, and uh, answer emails and return phone calls and, and that type of stuff. And so... Today was all about getting caught up, but uh, no, thank you to everybody that ordered, everybody that reached out, everybody that continues to reach out, everybody that uh, continues to send emails or social media uh, messages asking about certain teams and, and schools and talking about the product and the stuff that they got for Christmas and even the exchanges and returns and all that stuff. Everybody's been been super cool, so it's been fun to talk to everybody and, and finally finally being able to catch my breath down here a little bit, which is nice. Did you get to watch any basketball over break? What did I watch over break? Not much. I, I think I missed a lot. Um, I missed a lot. I did watch IU's bowl game against Tennessee, my my beloved Vols. Uh, so that was that was a can't miss game, and uh, got to watch Cheering that. For the wrong side. <laughs> that was wild, man. Wild. Damn, dead to rights. Um, usually that's Tennessee doing that to themselves. So it was kind of nice to see for a change, even though I'm an IU alum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, bring on basketball season. Yeah. You know, it's not a good IU basketball season though. When after they blow the bowl game, they're comparing to the basketball team blowing or almost blowing several games in a row. (laughs) Yeah, I I was traveling. I didn't get did not get to see the Maryland game, but I, I heard it fell apart uh, in the second half. Was it the second half that it fell apart? Because when I checked yep. the score, when I was stuck in traffic, we were up a point. I think it was like sixteen fifteen, and then they the next thing it. I knew, my my phone started blowing up with texts talking about us getting beat by twenty five or something. Yeah, they had it down to three in the second half, and then just again one of those crazy runs where it was like seventeen to two, and it was over. Yeah, that's nuts. I didn't watch much basketball. My my nephews uh, down there who went on vacation with us, they had the uh, virtual reality uh, PlayStation stuff, so that was taking up most of the screen time um, that we had down there out by the pool. Which was that stuff was crazy, by the way. 
you were gaming, huh? Oh, I was watching them game and, and taking videos of them and, and more or less laughing my ass off. I wasn't doing much <laughs> of the gaming myself, but uh, that yeah, that stuff was wild. Where's it go awesome. from here, right? Like, where's it? Where? What's the next step? No idea. What are we gonna get into today? Well, that that was your top. That's that's up to you. You're the one that comes up with the topics. I just oh, don't okay. do the research and talk a bunch of shit. <laughs> well, good, because what I wanted to do was our follow up uh, of the first decades draft and get into a different decade. This time, uh, the 2000s, so 2000s to 2010. We had talked about doing the most current decade, but I think kind of settled. That was a little too soon, maybe don't have enough perspective to pick the best players of that decade. Uh, so we wanted to get into 2000 to 2010. What, what did we do last time? 90 to 2000? Mm-hmm. And then I was I would, wanted you to go from uh, 80 to 90. That's the draft. Yeah, I think I you wanted have. to go further back. Yeah, that's the draft. I need, I, 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 I need more time. i got to really do some research because I, I'll be honest, I did not lo- watch a lot of basketball from 80 to 90 i mean i i basically got into basketball later in elementary school and uh, middle school was like full on then yeah 80 to 90 80 to 90 it'll be uh back heavy right so like everything from 87 to 90 is where the majority of our knowledge and team will come from yeah um because we're a little bit older i mean what year were you born 79 79 so i was 1980 and so we don't really know but we'll we'll know enough like that'll be a fun draft too because it'll be fun to kind of do some research on those players like i hate this decade that we're doing today just just so everybody knows oh man i see i went through and i I was like it felt unbelievable i've got like five guys at every position all right i I mean i I I still win are you looking at the Uh, same list i'm I'm worried what what guys you've got no i like i mean i I like the dudes that i have uh and i like a lot of the individual players but you saw like the the one and done kind of bum rush the college scene too so i can't help but look at this list and not feel a little bit cheated out of uh seeing some of these guys for at least another year you know two years if not three like some of the guys that we had in our our 90s draft you know what i mean like the the, the, lega- the you, legacies you with that. the legacies are there for some like uh carmelo obviously who wins a, mm-hmm. a national championship in his one year there um but do we have like that that sustained dominance that like career you know what i mean like I, yeah. I'm, I'm big in college i'm just big on that like career and just like if Carmelo stays for three years he's a first team all-american two of those years uh second team all-american as he was in 2003 he has uh, a national championship that we know of maybe another final four maybe another national championship a big east player of the year maybe a couple big east tournament championships you know what I mean like just stacking that trophy case and I get it I don't begrudge any of those guys for going one and done obviously make your money but uh from a fan standpoint, I just like a full trophy case of these like crazy accomplished college careers of the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I'd be curious how you deal with that because I definitely did wait like how long guys were there and try to take that into account because I know it doesn't totally matter because you can project out, like you said, a guy like Carmelo, you know if he had stayed three years, it's not like he's going to get worse. I mean, that guy was going to dominate college basketball for however long he chose to stay. Uh, but there is something about staying and legacy. And, you know, I think about a, a Eric Gordon at IU where, I mean, he was had an awesome freshman season, but I don't think of him as like an all-time IU great. Yeah, he's he's interesting. So I was as I was going back and looking through teams, he uh, DJ White that year was a second team All American, and Eric Gordon was a third team All American. So you had two All Americans on your team, and they got absolutely ran out of that tournament by Arkansas in the first round. Yeah, I wonder. There was some behind the scenes stuff going though. I mean, I. 
I even was listening back to something about the O2 team, and they they recapped a little about about the Bob Knight's end and and him losing to Pepperdine in that that game, and just talked about how a few days before CNN had run that story about uh, Neil Reed, and you know right. you, you, that stuff that unless you bring it up you can lose it can be lost to history and and it does matter to a team in the moment you know what what their coach is going through is he there mentally you know what how much time is he game planning or is he worried about whatever else is going on in the background well the other thing with that was the the kelvin sampson exit which is what you're alluding to and as a kentucky or as a kentucky fan as an indiana fan and homer you think about what he got in trouble for as far as the phone calls and stuff. And, I mean, if that truly was it, if that was the crux of everything were the impermissible phone calls. Not phone calls, all, text messages. Okay, with all of the uh, stuff that's come out in this FBI probe, it's I I, and I know it's not even a, a violation anymore. They've, they've done away with that rule or whatever. Uh, but it's just kind of laughable, you know, like all, yeah. you feel like as an IU fan, only IU gets in trouble for that and loses a, a really good coach because yeah. of some text me- <laughs> just, just Yeah, like, a wild loss. I mean, <laughs> probably, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> just crazy. So it is fun when you do the research for these things. Uh, what with some of the memories that, that come up. And obviously, you and I are IU guys and IU homers, so we talk a little bit more about that. And I'm sure there's people that are listening that are saying, like, well, the same thing happened to my team, yada, yada. You know what I mean, too? It's always just kind of interesting uh, to mm-hmm. look back and get some of those memories back. No doubt. Well, you, you going to take the first pick then? I'll give, I'll give it to you. Uh, I think I got it last time. Oh, yeah, I'm drafting all one and dones too, even though I hated them. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, every every yeah. pick. Is, no, I'm, 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 gonna... I'm, I'm already reassessing my list, and I'm taking some of them. And I guarantee you can get. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you guess my first pick. Just if you remember the last draft, who do you think my first pick is gonna be? Just take take a stab at it. Oh, man, I I don't. You took Shaq last time, so it's probably a big guy. But if not, I'd I'd say you're taking Carmelo. But I wanna I wanna hear it. Gregory Odin. Ah, oh, see, I knew it. Big guy. Yeah. So. Same, same, uh, the the same strategy as last time. I'm gonna go big to small because there's so much more quality small than there is quality big. Um, so and I hang wanna, on, do yep. you account for that his knees were about to break down because he has micro fracture the next year in the NBA? So some of these guys like Carmelo, you're projecting out they're gonna have good college careers, but. Would he have been a guy that had a great college career? Because he might have just had that one year and then been kind of like uh, just on the bench like he was for the Blazers. It's a good point. So the way that I look at it was the same way that Bill Simmons did the book of basketball where he picked like the player and the year. So okay. I'm picking these guys as we have that one year under their belt that we can we can go. If that's all, If that's all the sample size is, that's all we can go off of. We can't predict the future we can't project out like that it's just that one year so you just get him for that year correct and odin was was different that's the best way best way i can describe him just just different i know he had the wrist injury um and we know that he has the injury problems going going Mm -hmm. forward but um you know just a different type of dude i remember seeing him as a freshman at lawrence north uh play that really good pike team um, him and Conley, and I think Conley was supposed to go to Pike and then ended up at Lawrence North. Um, but uh, I remember watching that at Hinkle Fieldhouse, and there was a play where I think it was Courtney Lee. So, like, Courtney Lee was almost a forgotten dude in that whole uh, high school battle there. Not not necessarily forgotten, but nobody projected him to be one of the better pros. You know, you had Conley, right. obviously, who, who becomes the best pro, but Courtney Lee – out of Robert Vaden and all those other dudes at Pike and and uh, uh, you know all the the Lawrence North guys of Odin and Conley and stuff. Courtney Lee's had a damn good NBA career, and I think Still it was in Lee. The NBA. That, I think it was Lee that caught the ball on the wing, or it was Vaden, and they started to drive. And Odin, as a seven footer, in as a freshman seven footer, slides over and takes away the baseline and takes a charge. 
um, <laughs> against a pro level, you know, a high D major D one guard. He's out there moving like that, and and yeah. I'll never forget. My dad kind of looked at him, looked at me, and he was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, I did not. It's not a bad pick. Did yeah. not expect that. So, nah, I, uh, I, I, Owen, I Owen was just a freak, man. It just it really sucks that we didn't get to see him reach full potential. Yeah, it, not even close. I don't think I. I had a funny story about him and Mike Connolly. So, uh, one of my roommates in college, we actually lived with. Uh, my grandmother because we got placed at schools in indianapolis for our student teaching uh-huh. and he was at lawrence north so before school started he kind of like uh your your soon to be student teacher showed up for uh an open gym just to play and in walked in mike conley and and greg odin he thought they, they were seniors because he knew lawrence was going to be good he thought these guys were seniors and they were incoming freshmen that year and he was <laughs> like they're going to be good <laughs> he yeah played, he played yeah. uh, some pickup hoops with them, and he's like, "Yeah, that that's going to be a pretty good team." And I think well, they he, won the he was state right. championship. Yeah, like, what every year, right? That team, yeah, they didn't they didn't win that year. So the freshman year, Pike won state championship. I'm pretty sure every year with, after that with Vaden, and that was probably the best high school team that I ever saw. Was that that yeah. Pike team? They were so so balanced, so good. I don't think anybody averaged over. 13 14 a game but they had four or five dudes that averaged that and just a complete selfless team um it was they were phenomenal to watch but then you had you had that that run then after that with lawrence north where those teams were no joke they just had two high level superstars yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean right. that that pike team i mean so all time well. grades right for right high school exactly level. all right you're up all right uh, mine's gonna be pretty easy too, and and uh, sticks with my my theme. I'm taking Stephen Curry uh, with my number one pick. Wasn't even on my list. Oh my! I, Mainly what because college, I just, what I college basketball team are you are you watching? Because he was unbelievable to watch in college. I forgot to write his name down. That's why. He's <laughs> okay, <there>. good. <laughs> uh, Twenty five <laughs> points a game, forty seven percent from the field, ninety percent free throw shooter. Had those great tournament runs. I mean, did you quite. know about him before the tournament? I don't think I did, and that's the, that's the thing, though. That's that's the beauty of college basketball is that uh, a guy can cement himself in your memory forever with just a few games. And you you know, it almost seems like in retrospect that he must have gone to the Final Four, but that didn't even happen. Just you know. The, the narrative surrounds him and lifts him up and and he was fun to watch I, I remember he was and he wasn't there for like just one year so he, he's there for a few years and and I do remember the next year you know coming back and watching him a little bit more did you buy the hype on that first tourney run oh yeah yeah I I, I definitely thought he was just uh, a unique player I mean I I didn't think he'd be like become what he is i don't know that anybody could have projected that and he didn't get drafted like that uh but he definitely was going to be a good player there's there's no doubt like if you can shoot like that and just get hot the way he can get hot it's still i mean it's just electric it's just crazy to look back at that tourney run because i didn't necessarily like buy the hype as as it was happening you know what i mean uh mm-hmm. i just you know, we'd seen players get hot before and kind of lead teams uh, it was phenomenal to watch, um, but I did not see that dude changing the game of basketball forever, you yeah. know. And I kept waiting for one of the the big guys that they were playing, uh, the big teams that they were playing, for somebody to just step up and completely just shut him down. And huh. it never happened, you know. It continued yeah. to like not happen, um, which no was doubt. which should have been a sign, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean. Uh... I forget where it is. It might be a ringer podcast, but they were, they do uh, like talking about these guys. Did they come around at just the right time too soon, too late? And I mean, he is the perfect example of a guy coming along at the exact right time. Like his skill set matched up perfectly for the way that basketball changed. And he, of course, like you said, helped change it, um, pushing it forward with, you know, how elite that skill is. Right. Yeah. It, it's funny. I Like, we should do a thing where we go back and, and, and go back through his run. Because I would like to see it again now um, yeah. and, and fully grasp, 
what he did in that tournament because it was pretty phenomenal. We need to map out some rewatchables games because we got the we got the template. We haven't done our second one yet. I know, I know. It's all about time, brother. It's just finding the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, I'm up. All second right. pick. Pick number two. You gotta go, Mello. Told you I was going all one and done here. Mello. Uh, he was on my he was on my list. I think it's a good it's a good pick. I didn't have him as one of my my first choices though. Uh, at that position, would you call him a, a small forward? Yeah, that's where I put okay. him at the at the uh, forward spot, kind of guard forward. Yeah. Um, he basically did whatever. You are a little worried defensively if you um, have a coach that plays man to man. Uh, yeah. But I'll just if I'm that worried, I'll just get Beheim as my coach. Are we doing a coach? <laughs> oh, we didn't yet. Uh, we we can. Uh, we'll come back at the end. If I'm yeah. worried about my team defensively, then I'm just gonna take Beheim as a coach unless you take him from me. And uh, <laughs> no, now I'm definitely gonna take him. <laughs> I'm just now now I'm gonna start drafting for Link for that two three matchup zone. Yeah, but Mello, everybody knows Mello's story. I mean. The dude, the dude could give it to you anyway. Just a walking basket, and and I'll never forget the Final Four run, the national championship run, and he's just running down the court, smiling and laughing after every basket, like it was you know a playground, a playground game. He was he was amazing, and he hit the boards too. You know, he was yeah. getting double doubles out there. Um, he was just so much fun to watch in college uh that you just wonder like what one year of LeBron would have been. Oh no doubt no, it would have been good. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. I, I feel like Melo too is one of those guys that now in in retrospect people for whatever reason don't seem to like Melo, but he was awesome to watch in college. Like he was fun he was absolutely fun. Like you said, the smiliness. He just was having fun out there. Like he was living his best life for sure. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, do you think any of that, any of that mellow love is coming back with this blazer stint? Uh, it definitely has softened. It, there was, cause before he came back for the blazers, it was either like people were being dumb, like mellow's trash. He's never, good, never been good. Or they were like mellow stands where he's like, Oh my God, he need someone needs to get him. The Lakers need him. He's going to be the key to a championship. Everyone just needs to settle down. He was an awesome player. His time has passed. He's he's nice for the the Blazers. I wish though he had a a, a smaller role for a better team because he's his uh, defensive deficiencies are still uh, showing through for the Blazers even today. Just got to outscore him, but that's why I have Greg Oden backing him up too. <laughs> there you go. That's a that's a person they'd love in uh, Portland to have. Uh, he'd probably be in his prime right now and dominating if he was healthy. All right, you're up. All right, second pick. I'm gonna take another. I know small guard, but you know how it is for me. I'm taking Chris Paul with my uh, second pick. Wasn't even on my list. I can- I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm just kidding. Nah. Okay, I was gonna say. I just wanted to try to get to you. you you're gonna you're gonna make my head explode. <laughs> Chris Paul was up there for me too. Two now stayed two years too. So right. uh, again, I said I gave a little extra weight for guys who stayed uh, more than one year. He stayed for two and both unbelievable years. I mean the guy and the guy not only fits my shooting aesthetic. Uh, but also, I need a guy, if I can get the rest of the guys on my team, he's a guy that's obviously going to be able to pass. Um, unbelievable. He, uh, I was writing something down as you were talking there, so I missed a little bit of the first part of it. Um, it but I think he led the ACC in steals both years, too. Or not, not he, sure, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. He was up there, man. He he's in. I, mean, I think he's consistently a league leader in the NBA. You know, in his prime and steals too. Just quick hands. Uh, yeah. But he's very disruptive. Um. But a hell of a score in college. I mean, a hell of a score. Period. But in college too, he carried some of those Wake teams. Th- those Wake teams were really, really good. Wake had an unbelievable stretch there. Um, with the Rodney Rogers, Randolph Childress, Tim Duncan, Chris Paul, Josh Howard, um, and I know I'm leaving some some others out. I'm uh, Jeff Teague. Um, yeah. They, I mean, they had a really really good run. It'd be fun to to see them get back to that. Yeah, no kidding. They they have been a, a school that's been up and down, but their coach at the time that could be a good one to take from that era um, might be something that they haven't managed to find again. Skip Prosser. 
Uh, it, I think that's who it was then, right? Yeah, well, it was it was Odom. Um, uh, maybe that's who I'm thinking of. But it was Prosser then, and at that in the 2000s, yep. wasn't it? Right. Yep. But, yeah. All right, who you got? Number three for me is uh, going to be Shane Battier. Mm. And I'm going I'm to put him down at the other forward. So my front line is Mello, Battier, and Odin. And I know that Battier started in the, uh, what was it, 98-99? Because I think he yep. came in with Elton Brand and those guys at Duke. So he had two years that he was, well, going by your dumb criteria. I was taking 99-2002 where he was second-team All-American. But then he was uh, a first-team All-American in 2000 and 2001, national champ, national player of the year. Uh, Defensively could dominate games, kind of like your uh, mini college Scottie Pippen. Uh, yeah. as far as defensively and uh, just steady, right? You, you have to have somebody that's going to be uh, super steady on your on your team, and that's going to be Battier, just a, a natural-born leader and, and very, very accomplished in the uh, collegiate game. Yeah, uh, he was an unbelievable player. Um, a Duke guy that I actually kind of liked because he just – he didn't seem so demonstrative and – didn't play in a way that I hated. So <laughs> he's an acceptable Duke person for you to take. We'll take it. <laughs> oh, so I was, I'm glad that you did. Well, maybe you will take another Duke guy that I hate. Uh, but he was not on the list. He was actually one that I was going to, going to pick possibly. I've got, I've got another Dukey on the list. No, but no. Only one more, but I got a list of a lot of guys too. So I, I don't know yeah. if it, it'll come to him or not, but it might. Yeah. And I might not do it just because he's another Duke guy. I don't want two Duke guys on there trying to mix it, it up. It should. I mean, I, I'd say this is the greatest era for Duke basketball. I mean, 2000 to 2010, I think you could say those were the best Duke teams in the history of their school. Pretty damn good. Pretty I mean, damn good. That that Battier team, that starting five, I think all went to the NBA, right? Yeah. So was it Battier, Duhon, uh, J. Williams? Williams. Boozer and Dunleavy that won it in 2001. So. Yeah. Something like that. that that's a Something crazy like team. And then I, the IU team, the whatever, when they were. That was the following year. Battier wasn't there anymore. Right. The following year, right, because Battier graduated. Um, yeah. So, but that Batty, or that IU team, the Jeffries team that we always talk about, beat yeah. three, what was it, three top ten picks? Was they that right? Still have, I, their starting five that year might have had all – uh, NBA players too, because I think they had, uh, they had Dante, Dante Jones. Dante on Jones that team. for sure. Yeah, yeah. So wow, they still had Boozer, Dun Dunleavy, J Will, uh, all in there. So <laughs> just ridiculous. Just crazy. Just crazy amount of talent. That's it's funny that, uh, and I get it because it's college sports, but pe- and people like to hate on teams like Duke and Kentucky and North Carolina and all that stuff. But just as a fan of the sport in general. I, I tune in and watch all of those games for all those teams and end up oh. liking a lot of the players and sometimes end up liking the team um, from those schools too because I just can't ignore the talent. You know what I mean? Like that collection of talent is just insane. 100%. And I, and I think that's why I, I, I said, you know, every time people argue that they don't like the NBA, I'm always like, look, the the talent, like if you like basketball – if you, I understand if you're following like the story of a team or just getting attached to a certain player or a coach, that's a separate reason to watch. You know, it's like the difference between watching a, a TV show for a certain reason, like you just like a character or something like that, or uh, if you like movies. You know, and you want if you want to just see good movies, and if you want to just see great basketball, you're going to watch those those types of team, those Duke teams or uh, some of the other great teams throughout history and enjoy watching them for who they are even if you're not a fan of the team. Right, exactly. Couldn't agree more. All right, All right my up. third third pick is my only one and done. Uh but I absolutely right. Loved this guy watching this guy his one year uh, at Texas. I'm going with Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, he was phenomenal. Same year as Odin too, right? He was the number two pick that year. I I can't 
remember, even even though I watched Melo, I can't remember being as excited to watch Melo's games. I mean, last year with Zion, I kind of got the same feeling as I had with Durant. I just loved watching every one of his games. It just seemed like he could he could do anything out there, and I didn't know what he was going to do game to game, but I knew he was going to do something that I wasn't going to see in any other uh, NCAA game. I, I have to admit something, and I'm I'm almost embarrassed to admit I did not watch a ton of Kevin Durant in college. Man, we should do a rewatchable of one of his games because he was fantastic. So I'm trying to think, who came first? Did Durant come first or Beasley come first? Um, it would have been Durant, right? Because Beasley was with yeah. Derek so Rose. Beasley came yeah. the year after, and I I bought in on. Beasley and would watch him all the time, mainly because I went to Cincinnati and watched him and uh, him uh, play. Wait, was it? No, I watched LJ Mayo and Bill Walker play. Then um, they weren't. I think, but I, I'm pretty. And Beasley played in that game. I think he played for Oak Hill in that game too. Mm. So I kind of had like a, vest, too. a vested interest in in those guys. And I'm sorry if that's wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that was right. Uh, and so I just remember watching him because he just scored in bunches and, um, and, and Durant was obviously the same way. Um, but I was not, I just, I never remember catching like Texas games on TV to watch, to tune in and watch. But on the flip side of that, I was a hundred percent mellow, like never missed any of those Syracuse games. Cause I always kind of liked Syracuse anyways, but then watching mellow when he burst on the scene in that Memphis game on ESPN, uh, with like 22 points or whatever it was as a freshman, it was like okay, I, I I took note of that, and then I just I just missed Durant. I don't know how. Yeah, I just missed. See, him. I was heat I was heat seeking both of those years because the Bulls stunk, and I was really hoping that they would get him, and they ended up with uh, Derrick Rose. So I li- I liked Beasley too. I was watching him that whole year. So just just for guys that sometimes the guys you remember are the ones you just watched a lot too. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Exactly. All right, I'm going with my shooting guard. I'm going Juan Dixon from Maryland. Another ACC guy. You you love the ACC. Well, I got I got two, and then I got Big Ten, and I got a – well, I guess Syracuse was Big East with Melo, though they weren't ACC. That's true. So, well, I loved Juan Dixon, man. Just this skinny little dude out there running around. I mean, I loved him until he beat – our beloved Hoosiers uh, for a title, but those Maryland teams were phenomenal. He was the leader. Did he stay all four years. Was he a senior when he left? I think so. I believe so. But I also love Gary Williams, and I love Maryland. I love Cole Fieldhouse. Like yeah. I, I like that's the that's the one license I really, really well. I shouldn't say it's the one because I have probably a list of five <laughs> to ten that I'm like dying for ninety nine to get. But Maryland is is way, way up there um, because those shorts were phenomenal that year, too. And they have the Lynn Bias uh, history and Lefty Drizzle. Oh, yeah. All that good stuff, too. But um, Joe Smith, I remember watching those teams. But I love Juan Dixon because he he just he could give it to you a lot of different ways. He didn't score a ton from three. Um, he was more of like a slicer and a slasher, but a pull-up jump shot uh mm-hmm. guy, kind of like a small Rip Hamilton out there. And I love Rip oh, Hamilton. That's, good. that's a good comp. So, um, and he's got a national championship under his belt. So, and I think he has. Uh, you weighed that a little bit. Yeah, I always weigh that a little bit. If you're the leader of those teams, and um, you know, first team All American too that year, and if he has yeah. another Final Four, so he's got a couple Final Fours, probably some ACC honors, obviously too that I didn't look up, but uh, oh, that sure. Natty and 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 uh, I'm sure he was the MOP of that that year for him too. Oh yeah, he's got. Consensus All American, Tourney MOP, ACC Player of the Year that year, three times All ACC. Yeah, he's he's loaded. He's got them all. Legit. All defense, all defensive yep. team three times. I was just about to say his defense was phenomenal too. So loved me some Juan Dixon. Wish he would have had one off night there in in O two. <laughs> Man, would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. Just a just a clunker. If he could have put up a J Will level clunker in that national championship game uh who knows where we're at today without without looking at it through our our crimson tinted glasses that whole game was kind of a clunker if you remember it oh yeah i mean that was one of the most boring national championships of all time until 
uh, until that Butler UConn game was pretty bad too. Uh, yeah. Butler second run, you know, after the the Duke epic game. Um, I mean, unless you were like in a those fan big of stadiums. Those you don't you don't get a lot of good good basketball. I feel like it, you know it's the end of this long run. These guys are all traveling and they're not used to it. And you know they're in this giant field house. It's just I a hate weird... those stadiums. Don't get me started on the stadium. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like it's a we we are not setting them up for success, right? But <laughs> think of, so think of, think if you had the Final Four in a basketball stadium. Like think if Hinkle hosted a Final Four instead of Lucas Oil. Yeah. I mean, I would pay. I would literally pay two grand to go to that. I, I don't have a lot of money. I'm a teacher, folks. But two grand is <laughs> a lot of money to me. <laughs> yeah, be, people are like, it'd probably be twenty-two grand. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. But for me, <laughs> in my current situation, getting paid what teachers get paid, two thousand. <laughs> You'd be paying uh, two thousand dollars to watch it at the jumbotron outside of Hinkle Field House is where yeah. you'd be. <laughs> okay, edit that shit out, man. I don't want yeah. people to know how poor I am. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm up, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm taking a, a two time national championship. I need some heart and some defense to uh, someone who defeated your Greg Odin in the national championship game as well. I'm taking Joe Kim Noah. Yikes. I see he's polarizing player, but maybe because he was a bull, I I love him. And again, this is this fits in with my team ethos, right? So I've got Steph Curry, I've got Kevin Durant. They're getting a lot of shots right there. So I need people who are going to be willing to do other things. I got CP3 to to dish everybody, and now I got Noah to play defense. And he's a great passer, really underrated. Like. The year Derrick Rose was out, that guy was running the Bulls' offense from the high post, and they had a good year. He all de- he made a defensive player of the year one year. This guy was a stud. He was a stud. I actually like uh, Joakim Noah quite a bit. I just I just said yikes because there's so much talent out there. Um, I know. And I- but you need heart. Like, heart is underrated, man. I, I still think – like, people – look at Montrose Harrell on the Clippers. Love that, that dude, dude. I know. That dude did not – get any love in the draft and people just underrate it like sometimes on a team the the iu team this year i think just no heart man you need a guy like aj moye from that o2 team or joe kim noah like that guy is all heart like he's not if your team is is playing like dogs he's gonna go out there and chew everybody out and inspire some people and get them going okay so here here's my question here's my question and, and maybe this guy gets picked later, both of these guys. But you take Noah over Tyler Hansborough and Al Horford? Or was, Ho- was Horford, Horford really the defensive juggernaut of that? Nah, I like I like Horford, but again, uh, he's, not br- he's not bringing that like mentality that Noah is. Like I need – you could go with Hansborough because he's kind of like that same kind of ferocious mentality i mean his nickname was psycho t uh much but i just don't like him as a player as much i shouldn't say much more accomplished but he was more accomplished from an individual stat standpoint definitely you know noah's got the two national championships hansborough only had one uh but i mean if you're just picking best players of the decade i wouldn't put I put Hansborough above Noah, but I'm I'm thinking about team composition here. I don't want Hansborough right. next to Kevin Durant. Like that's well, Han- not a, Hansborough is like the Leitner of this era. He is. He really is because was he was he two time National Player of the Year? I know he at least was one. I think so. I, I, not, I mean, he was two time sure, first team All American, one third team, one second team in four years. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. No doubt, four-time consensus All-American, Wooden Award, Naismith Award, ACC Player of the Year, yeah, all, all freshman, all tourney MVP. <laughs> I mean, he had it all. But again, yeah. if we're ranking, if we were just doing a ranking of players in the decade, he might be number one for the decade as far as college players go. Right. But I don't want I don't want him on my team. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler <laughs> Hands, real fans. A real ringing endorsement there. <laughs> hey, what are, are we just selecting uh, 
uh, starting five, or do we have time to do two bench players too? Uh, we're at 43 minutes right now, so it's up to you, man. You're the, let's, you're the boss. Let's do because we each have one more pick for a starting yep. five. Let's do two bench. Let's do one bench guy. All right, and then we'll do a coach. How about that? All right, done. All right, so to finish off uh, my team. The real pick should be Jay Williams, right, at Duke? Because that guy was nuts. Yeah, but I, th- I thought that that's who you were taking when you said second Duke player. Right, That's and that's who I should pick, and that's who I kind of want to pick. But my heart goes with Jason Gardner as my point guard pick from oh, uh, wow. Arizona. So You went off the board there. Well, he, has a, he was a second team and a third team All-American um, in the 2000s. Uh, has a Final Four. National championship runner-up to that Duke team that we mentioned with uh, yeah. Jay Williams and Battier and those guys. And uh, from my graduating class and from Indianapolis, and I love Arizona, and I love Arizona's uniforms, and <laughs> I needed to have him on my team. And uh, I, uh, I like that you're up, picking guys I, based on uniforms. <laughs> I lived down the hall from him in a, at, a, at a top 40 workout thing, so – <laughs> um, just, just going with my heart here over my head, but, uh, but, but Gardner's nothing to sniff at either. That dude was a stud, man. No, definitely not. Yeah. He, he was, he was unbelievable player, but I, I wouldn't think, and you know, if he did a top 50, would he be in the top 50 players of the decade? I think he would have to be in the top 50. I mean, I he's got two, two all American teams. I mean, that's no joke. There's not too many other people on this list that have two All American teams. I don't think he was. A, I don't think he was a two time All American. Yeah, he was. I'm looking at it right here. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'm not looking at it. I just didn't remember that. What so was his best year? Say, what? His he was he did he stay for four years? Um, he's. That's a great question. He was a. Third team All American pick in 2001, 2002, and then he was second team All American pick in 2002 and 2003. Okay. So he, he made two teams, and uh, I'm sure, I thought he was Pac 12 player of the year, too. He's legit, dude. I think he's sneaky legit. Hmm. Yeah. He seems like one of those guys that had, had a reputation and maybe didn't quite achieve up to the reputation, but too small. Was still. Well, but I, what I'm saying is I think he was probably amazing, but, like, his reputation coming in was probably unattainable for him. You know what I mean? Like, he was still unbelievable. See, I would because argue. Because he came in, you know, going to be. I would be, argue the opposite of that. I, I mean, he came in as an All-American in high school, uh-huh. and then he made two All-American teams and led a team to a national championship runner-up. I would think that people would have thought, in high school, he he automatically was going to walk into the pros, but there's body type for the pros, and he didn't have the body type. The game was there, body type wasn't there. It's like dude was like five eight. Yeah, listed as five ten, but but definitely could have been smaller than that. Guaranteed. That dude was a stud, man. He was a stud. I, Shout out to I'm Jason Gardner. I'm not. Uh, I'm not denying it. I'm just. Say, I'm just saying. So it was surprise surprise me with the pick. So I'm I'm going with uh, power forward with my next one two year player, uh, absolutely unbelievable athlete in college and beyond. I'm going with Blake Griffin. Yeah, he was an interesting one. I I saw him on there. I I went more low two thousands than I did high two thousands because I hate the decade in general. Um, <laughs> but Blake Griffin Blake Griffin was kind of like uh, pre Zion. So he's yeah. kind of like, you know what I mean, to an extent where that guy just had a bounce to him. I watched a lot of those Oklahoma games. He was fun Me to watch. Too. Yeah, that's that's why I lo- that's why I loved him because I I remember watching those games and I remember him like hitting his head on the backboard and I was just like, who that? Who is this guy? Because he look, <laughs> he's got a unique body type like Zion, especially for college basketball. You don't expect thick guys like that to be flying over the rim. Yeah, no, he he had some bounce to him. He was uh, he was interesting. He played with his brother too, so they were out oh, there balling. Right. Yeah. All right, so we we'll go one bench player then. Bench player, who's your, who you got on your bench? 
Uh, I can go with heart overhead on this one, too, even though this guy was phenomenal. I'm going to go Hakeem Warwick from that Syracuse team. Oh, my God. Two, look at you, two Syracuse te- guys. I know, man. I got a real soft spot for Syracuse. <laughs> I, I watched a lot of uh, a lot of Syracuse games back then. It comes back I down to the uniforms. I also had Wesley Johnson on my list too. That's oh my thing. gosh! Get another out of here with that. Love that dude. Come on. Oh yeah, no. I love that dude. Uh, but Hakeem Ward is <laughs> trying to get too. beat now. Hakeem Ward. Uh, I think he was Big East Player of the Year his junior year. Two time yeah. All American. I believe it. Um, defensively. That link, uh, that block against Kansas, the dunk against Texas in the Final mm-hmm. Four. I just, I love those long, rangy um, dudes like Warwick. So uh, I fell in love with him watching watching Carmelo and followed him the rest of the way. So um, just kind of a highlight, walking highlight, ready to happen too, right? So I mean, if there was a guy that uh, you picked to represent a Syracuse player, it might be Hakeem Mork. That's that's sure. what I think of when I think of a Syracuse player. Like long, rangy, uber athletic, perfect for the zone defense, right? He had a long ass NBA career too. Yeah, he did. He hung around for really, a long time. Really, really long. I mean, I know we're just looking at college, but it's uh it's amazing, you know. It's just it's amazing to look and I know we did that one pod with, with Joe where we looked at guys that didn't make it in the NBA. It's also amazing to see dudes that just find a niche and, and play forever, you know? Um, and it's not, re- I guess it's not really amazing when you're talking about a two time all American or like a Jared Jeffries, you know, that was, was a, a stud at Indiana too, and a, an all American um, one year, one of his two years there. But uh, it's just funny how their roles change in the NBA and what they become there and then how they find that niche and if they can adapt and just stay and stay happy in that role and, you know, live out a 10 to 14 year career making millions for one yeah. one reason. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, some guys do. And then Warwick and Jeffries both did. Jeffries was kind of a defensive specialist like Warwick uh, through the, you know, I'd say the prime part of his career. I might have already said this on the podcast at, at some point, but it's all it's just amazing to me that Jared Jeffries was Gatorade player of the year coming out of high school uh, in Bloomington. Uh, goes to IU, becomes all American, you know, McDonald's all American high school, all that stuff, becomes all American, leads us to the national championship game, high draft pick. I can't remember how high, but the high draft pick. And then I remember watching him when he played for the Knicks, and if he looked at the basket from outside of six feet away, the entire MSG would yell in unison, like, no, don't shoot, you know what I mean? (laughs) And you have this guy that's this accomplished, great basketball player, but his role in the NBA is not look at that basket outside of six six feet. <laughs> and yeah. everybody knows it. The fans know it and everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, that, like, you know, we're weird. sitting there as, as guys that went to IU and he went to IU and watched him go where we didn't give a shit if he pulled up from half court and shot because that was oh, our no. guy, you know? Yeah, green light. Just yeah, it's the difference between very good and elite, right? Yeah. Pretty much role player to all star, all star to all time great is just like a this this huge gap. It's yeah, it's, it's like the difference between like almost JV varsity and playing in college. It's the, it doesn't seem that big because they're all on the same court, but it really can be. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty interesting. All right, my my bench guy, I'm going with uh, someone that you might not expect because uh, he's a. A dookie, but I'm, I love shooting, so I'm gonna go with JJ Redick. Yeah, Redick. Redick was one I had down. Uh, so your team's probably gonna kill me with Redick and, and Steph Curry out there running around bombing, <laughs> bombing threes. I mean, Redick are gonna be bombing threes. Redick was a killer. Uh, he was. Do you remember that game that Texas Duke one? I think it was one versus two, and. It might have even been in a neutral court, but I think it was at Texas. And Reddick just exploded for like 36 and was just talking shit to the crowd the whole time. Um, I can't even remember what year that was. I'd have to look it up. But that would be a good game as a rewatchable because that dude was phenomenal that night. I mean, just just think about that, right? I I think he's still the all-time ACC leading scorer. Is that right? 
I, that I don't know. No clue. I, I, I think that. he. I think he is, and I, I'm not 100 percent sure of that. But he's up. He's up there. And to just to just put that in a sentence with all of the unbelievable players that have gone through there, that no he's kidding. number one is that's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. He had like a major body transformation too. Remember he, when he came in, he was kind of pudgy. He could always shoot, um, but he was a little bit pudgy. And I remember, I, I think on a telecast, they said that he cut out uh, Popeye's chicken uh, or, or something like that. He loved Popeye's or Po' Boys or some some <laughs> some down south uh, I love chicken, that. chicken waffle place and, and cut that out of his diet. And he really slimmed down. Now he's like a diet freak, I think, in the NBA. But um, Oh, yeah. Which you got? I mean, you kind of have to be, but uh, he really transformed his body and his game. His game came along with it too. So I mean, he came in as a shooter, but he left as a just an assassin. He was a killer, man. That's uh, a so he's num- number two. Can you and you already named number one? I bet you it can come back, come back around. <laughs> All right, name number one. Yeah, Tyler Hansborough is number one. He's number two. Well, some of that, too, is guys that are going to stay for four years and guys yeah. that are going to get significant playing time as freshmen to rack up as many points as you can. No doubt. Uh, but those two guys are special cases, too, so you're going to have to be a special case talent to oh, yeah. even like he, approach that. He came in, he came, and he, w- he came in, you know, 11, 11 points, basically the same until his senior you know senior year. He's going he's – going, uh, pretty consistent from when he came in as a freshman well a lot of those guys too that have those all-time uh conference scoring records they might be pretty safe these days because your special talents aren't staying around long enough to to get that yeah it had it had to be someone like an adam morrison or somebody like that coming through again to, to to challenge it where it's a guy that's the hall of very good but not great right Right, or doesn't have the doesn't have the NBA game, but is perfectly suited for college. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. All, All right. right, who you got for your coach? I'm gonna let you pick the coach first, since you gave me the first pick. You can have your your first dibs on the coach. Well, I'm gonna go with uh, Roy Roy Williams. Then I've always liked him as a coach, all the way, going all the way back to Kansas. Just like just like his uh, personality on the on the court think he's a good coach got some national championships in there um thought about uh going a couple different directions like i said i think this was coach k's decade and when he was at his peak but i can't do it um and then definitely billy donovan could have been another one from this from this decade with the back-to-back championships and florida was i mean that's probably going to be the peak of of their basketball prowess i would imagine right yeah no it's a a solid pick. Roy Williams is phenomenal. And when you have sustained success, I mean, I think that sustained success is just so hard to be good. Even if you're at the Carolinas and the Dukes of the world, uh, it, you still have to bring it, right? I mean, you still have to get the talent. You still have to recruit. And recruiting is, is a much a, the, the job of a coach is coaching the X's and O's nowadays. Yeah. Um, so I'm always just amazed by uh, those guys and how good they are. And it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to a Duke, um, a North Carolina, uh, Villanova even with Jay Wright. I know he's younger than those guys that yeah. we just mentioned. Um, but when those those coaches leave, uh, who the Bayheims, um, who who fills those voids? It's and do tough. They, As we can do see they it struggle? I mean, how do you it's replace tough. legends? Well – North Carolina got Dean Smith replaced by Roy Williams, so that's the best way to go. But they did. <laughs> you can, they, they you can re- they replace him with. Guthr- well, they went Bill Guthridge first, and then they went Matt Doherty before they got. Yeah, Roy. I know, but I think that they were just waiting for Williams to be ready. I mean, I was if he had wanted it right away, it would have been his. Right, but he had he had his thing going at Kansas too. I he mean, did. Kansas he teams did. were really really good too. Yeah, I mean, he's got an eighty percent win percentage for his career 32 years he's won 80 percent of his games like, which that's is crazy dumb. that's dumb it's crazy that might be the exception to the rule though carolina might be the exception to the rule like can you can you say another one that just rolled that close I mean, in succession look at ucla 
Yeah. Right. Look. Look at IU. Yeah. Look at Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could say Kentucky a little bit in there. Tubby wasn't wasn't bad, and then they got the yeah. Cal, you know got the Calipari. So T- Tubby, yeah, Kentucky would probably be the closest. I guess Kansas, right? I mean, they flipped they flipped uh, Roy for Bill Self, and and I'd yep. say that's probably the national one. championship. Yep, that's yeah. really good too. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, but I mean, like UConn gets uh, Calhoun leaves, and then Ollie wins. Seemed that like they had it right, and then it kind of kind of fell apart, and then they come back with Hurley or whatever. But yeah, I mean that's just so hard to to do, you know? No doubt. Like like, what's Duke gonna do? Ah, yeah, who knows? It, it depends, I guess. What what are those? How good are those guys on the bench? It's hard. It's hard to tell, you know. And I don't know how much those guys are you know guys go to duke for coach k anymore or or do they go for the other guys and and the the brand i don't know i think it's i think it's coach k a lot of it's coach k but the Uh brand is coach k too though i mean yeah he's been there long enough that the brand is him he is the brand and that usa basketball stuff helped tremendously with the young group too so well my coach was the same coach that I had in the last draft. <laughs> oh I'll never, gosh. ever not draft Bob Knight. Oh, my God. I did not coach. <laughs> or Bob Knight coached in that era. Bob oh, Knight Lord. would be my coach. He only and got, like, one, one year in there, though, right? Well, he went to Texas Tech. Uh, I guess that's true. Yeah. When did he start at Texas Tech? Mm, well, it had to be like oh four, oh five, something like that. Yeah, so he was out for just a year, maybe. He was out for a couple couple years, I think, because he wasn't coaching when uh, so his ca- players. Do you, get, do you get that last Indiana year? It's ninety nine, two thousand. Then he gets fired, and then he's back you. at. Te- so he's only at Texas Tech. He's there oh one to oh eight. I'll take it. In any era that he coached in, any decade that he coached in, Bob Knight will be my coach. I mean, it's not a bad bad pick. He I, no. he, he wasn't at his peak, but uh, I mean, you're getting a, you're getting a legend, and certainly he he'd have some players to work with on your team. I, it, I'd like to see what he would do with uh, Carmelo on the defensive end. He he, damn near yeah, he might kill him. <laughs> um, but he <laughs> he loved Greg Oden. <laughs> he damn near. Damn near took that Texas Tech, Andre Emmett, Texas Tech team to the Final Four, too. Yeah. Um, yeah and agree. if you remember, Texas Tech was not uh, overly well thought of at that time for, for a basketball hotbed. I know they had a little success here and there with the Darvin Ham year and uh, all that stuff. But, yeah. you know, Bob Knight can coach. Period. No doubt. No no doubt about it. Yeah. he It would have been interesting to see, to see what he could do with a, a – another stud team and with the the off chance that that karen knight is listening to this there was no way i was picking another coach but Bob knight. i love it you know stick stick to your guns man <laughs> all right well that was more fun than i thought it was gonna be good yeah i i, I enjoyed it as well I, lo- I love the draft it always leads in interesting ways and i think there's always it's it's unbelievable to look at how many great players have passed you you, you there's so many every year and i think people all get stuck in like the one and duns and worrying about who's not there and instead of just looking around and realizing like every year it's unbelievable that this many good players are are out there and playing yeah it, it really is i i wanted to take one i love those villanova teams with uh Alan ray and randy foy and kyle yeah. lowry like i love those dudes too yeah um, there I were so many teams, so many Your boy players. Troy Bell too was in there. Yeah, we left off so many, so many great players. Um, you know, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Nothing. Gotta, gotta leave somebody off. Exactly. We'll do this draft again in ten years, and we'll <laughs> we'll repick teams, and they'll look completely different. We'll do this again in six months. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> we need to do the '80s draft, man. 80s, All right. 90. All right. I'm in. All right, brother. All right. Thank you for listening to the 199 podcast with 
HVS, the high volume shooters. For more information, check out the blog at 199.com under HVS. And while you're there, do yourself a favor and pick up some retro college shorts. Till next time.